Hello and welcome to SeaWorld. Today we are doing something a little different for this kind of gloomy day. I don't know if you could see behind me, but the sky is just, it's gloomy. It's two o'clock in the afternoon right now. It's just, it's just kind of gloomy, but that's all right. We are heading into SeaWorld for our very first time. Uh, neither of us have been, so this is gonna be kind of an interesting little trek here. And we were kind of feeling like doing some roller coasters today. And we do have passes for SeaWorld. We ended up buying them back in November. We just, uh, obviously with December being crazy and whatever happened, it's our first time that we're actually able to come out. So come join us today as we do our very first visit here to SeaWorld Orlando. Also, we're walking in and none of the coasters are going and that was kind of the whole reason we were coming. So I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if maybe just like nobody's in line. But we looked and it was like 20 minutes or so for the wait time. So it shouldn't be down. This is the new coaster coming to uh, the SeaWorld location here in Orlando opening up in 2023. This is the Pipeline Surf Coaster. So I think there's gonna be possibly AP preview. So we're gonna do this definitely when the time does come. Um, but yeah, I don't know when it'll be here, but it says summer 2023, it looks kind of unique. I haven't seen a stand-up coaster in a very long time and any of them that I have seen have actually closed down weirdly enough. So not too sure if that's gonna be popular enough, but who knows? Either way, it's time to get inside of the park. And uh, yeah, like I said, first time here, very interesting. I don't know, kind of wild, but I, I wish it was I, I wish it was more sunny today. I, I do wish that that was the case, but I'm still a little nervous that none of the coasters are running. And one quick stop before we actually go getting into the park is guest services so I can get a printed copy because everything was online. So just give us one second, gonna get our printed card and then we will be getting moving here. Uh, there are some storms to be coming in, but nothing too crazy yet, so hopefully no problems with that in the next few hours. One of our first stops as we're coming into the park are these flamingos that are bright, bright pink. And if you guys have been over to Disney, I feel like there's our little um, doll. These are very vibrant. Just very interesting. Looks like there's a few sleepers here. This guy's a little dark here. A little hard to see. They're peeking their heads up. That's cute. They all look very large too, but like I said, very, very pink. Very, very pink. So another thing to keep in mind here is you do not get um, free lockers. So we paid $10 to just kind of get like the all day rentals is what it says. So we're renting our, our first locker here to go on Manta. And then we're gonna go ahead and get our GoPro strapped up and then um, we'll see you here in a little bit. But we have just finished our first roller coaster here at SeaWorld and it was Manta. So you guys got to see some footage there. That was pretty intense. We haven't done like a normal roller coaster in a very long time. Never Obviously like together. never together, but I'm saying like us in general, like I, I, it's been a long time for me. It's been a long time for you. And um, yeah, it's just like, I mean, you obviously have like Hagrid's and like Velocicoaster, which like I'm not discounting them as coasters, but like we haven't had the like go up the chain hill kind of lift into like, you know, loops and all that, that stuff. So um, it was just kind of unique. It was fun. Uh, Nicole was definitely rattled up from it, but it was a good ride. It was a, a fun ride. Faster than I thought. We've both ridden Superman, which kind of is equivalent to uh, the layout here for Manta. But I felt like this one almost like, maybe just we haven't been on it in a while, like for Superman, but it felt like kind of whippy, like the, the drop and everything. So fun ride. Either way, we're gonna head over towards Kraken and try and hit at least all of the major coasters here first. Um, I think we have like a free sea lion feeding or something that's good to like January 31st. 
So we don't technically have to use it today, but it was complimentary with um, the annual pass. So if we have time, we'll do that. Otherwise, we'll have to do that in the next like week or so before that expires. And next up will be Kraken here. So right around the corner, this is gonna be our next roller coaster. This looks pretty intense. And um, yeah, we'll kind of see what this one feels like. Lots of vibrant colors. I actually like some of the, oh no. This park closes at five, or maybe it's just Kraken. Oh no, we don't have much time. Okay, well this is this is not good because we thought it was seven. So, all right, we're gonna put our stuff in the lockers and then get going. Oh no. We have now finished up on Kraken and the closest comparison I think would be like the Hulk just as far as like um, loops go and kind of just like the uh, like structure of the ride vehicles themselves but I would say in all honesty that was a little bit smoother than Hulk which was kind of nice. There was I think a few more loops than Hulk though. Um, pretty intense start to finish on that ride. There's like one little corkscrew at the end that kind of like jerks you up pretty, pretty bad uh, but we did back row again. We've done two back rows. So pretty cool ride, uh, yeah. But either way, I'm I'm hoping that the weather holds off us on us here because it is looking a little gloomy, and I've been seeing that there's potential rain in the forecast. So hoping that doesn't uh, come our way. But we are gonna head over towards Mako now. Go ahead and pop on that, and then I think we'll end with Icebreaker, which is around the corner. So two more roller coasters, and then kind of see what we're doing from there. I don't know what was with the five o'clock thing. I don't know if that's just cracking specifically. Hoping that's not all the coasters. But uh, the park still says it's open until 7, so my 5 o'clock freak out just a minute ago, a, a little unwarranted, but I think it's just maybe cracking. We'll find out, I guess, as we get uh, towards Mako and we'll see what the line says there. All right, we are finally making our way over towards Mako. We're not really sure. We can't, we can't navigate this park very well because we've never done it, but um, there's got to be a simpler way to get to Mako. And I think we're doing it wrong. I don't, I'm not sure, but there's got to be a simpler way from Kraken because I feel like they were decently close, and we just like walked the entire park. We are the tallest one in the park, though. All right. Alright, we have just finished up on Mako, and as of now, for me, that was my favorite ride in the park so far. What are you thinking? I agree. I yeah. already asked if we can ride it again. <laughs> that is a, it's an intense ride, very fun ride. Um, 
We've done similar coasters, like I said before, but this one, I mean, you just kind of keep ejecting up. A lot of fun, fast, start to finish, great ride. Um, we are heading over to Icebreaker right now for our final ride here. Today and then go back to Mako. Probably go back to Mako then, um, do the back row. We wanted to get front row on at least something, so we waited a little extra for uh, the Mako front row. Just I know kind of like those like giga coasters and, and uh, hyper coasters tend to be a lot more fun in the front if you get like that full visual. So we went with that, but we are going to head over here towards Icebreaker. And then um, hopefully this is up and running. I haven't seen it run in a minute, um, but hopefully this is up and running. That'll be our last coaster here. But again, Mako, great ride, intense, fun. And it's, a, it's just a lot of like up and downs to be completely honest, but it's honestly a great ride. So credit to SeaWorld for a fantastic coaster here. All right, we're gonna go put our stuff in a locker and it is up and running. 60 minute wait, it says nothing's been posted or like accurate on timing, but this one might be. The line looks long, but not too bad. So we're gonna go ahead, get our locker taken care of. We'll be back. Breaker review. Um, cool ride. It was a little bit of a long wait. Not not too bad to be completely honest. The longest I think we've waited yet. And obviously you have one train, so it, that's just the nature of it. But um, the seats on this ride were horrible. I was like tripping just trying to get into the first spot and then getting out of the vehicle. Uh, just the contraption's horrible. Um, the ride is, is fun. It's just whippy. It's cool. It's quick but it's um, very short. The, the seat contraption was horrible. And my thighs and my shins were like brutalized. They were just like getting yanked and just like, I don't know. The seats, not great. Ride, cool, but short. So that's kind of the gist of this one. Definitely worth doing and, and, and it's fun. It's intense um, for like 20 seconds, which is kind of cool. But we're gonna head over to Mako for one last ride before the night is done and uh, the light is kind of gone here. It got a little dark as you can see my face already. So I will kind of do a close out here in a second, but we're gonna head over to Mako. One last ride there and then wrap it up. It's about 6.15 right now, so the darkness has arrived. We are going to make one quick pit stop and pick up some Dippin' Dots. It's been quite a while. Not doing anything unique here. I see they have like the Icebreaker Sunday. I know you guys probably can't see it, but um, the classic banana split is the best Dippin' Dots that there are. I don't really like normal banana splits, but when it comes to Dippin' Dots, banana split is the way to go. Trust me, try it. That's Dylan's tip of the day. Okay, well we just finished up with three rides on Mako. We did two in the back row, one in the front row. We were actually the very last train as we were getting on. They were like, anybody in line, like find a spot because this was the last train. So there was actually a group behind us that was going to do front row as well, but they ended up uh, just kind of like going and doing like fourth row, I don't even know. They kind of just like split up, so uh, that was kind of fun. We got to do front row final ride for the night, so that's always a good time. But either way, this park is definitely uh, interesting. It's, it's you know, as far as the rides go, which is pretty much all we did, um, the roller coasters are, are a good time. And they have the newest one, which is right behind us right now, on display over there, which is the surfing coaster of sorts. So it's pretty much all built. It's right up front here. I don't actually know the release date. It just says summer 2023. Spring. So is it spring 2023? Mm -hmm. Oh, so then it should be coming hopefully in the next few months. And like I said, hopefully we get an AP preview of that if that's a possibility. But you know, when that does come out, we'll go ahead and cover it. We do want to come back and try some of the shows and things that they have to offer. But if you were doing just rides, I would say this is probably like a half day park. Like if you're just trying to do like the attractions that they have as far as like coasters and whatever, um, there's not a ton of that here. But it is a fun little park. I think it's a, a good time and 
you know, if it's something you're looking forward to, you know, doing down here in Orlando, I think it's definitely worth at least a visit. I will say that. I think it's worth a visit. Coasters are fun, good time, enjoyable kind of environment, very vibrant colors here too. So either way, we need to get out of here. It's seven o'clock, which is weird that it closes that early, but rightfully so. I guess you got a lot of animals here to deal with, but I do appreciate you guys hanging out with us today. If you did like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you aren't yet, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. We do have a goal of 1,000 by the end of 2023. That is our New Year's resolution is to try and hit that this year. So, you know, every uh, person that does subscribe to the channel ultimately helps. And uh, yeah, so again, thank you guys for hanging out. We will catch you guys in the next one. Take care.